Rumors are coming thick and fast for Tesla's new version for supercharger. It's going to be faster than their current supercharger, and we know approximately what size it's going to be. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. On the electric Viking. Sorry for the red Viking face. It looks a bit red. Viking ish today. I actually burnt my face yesterday on a fire. Big fire. I didn't actually touch the fire. I just was probably a few meters away from it and it singed my face and my arms a little bit as well. Surprised me how hot fires can get even when you're several meters away from them. Anyhow, today was a great day. I took my boys in the morning to BMX training. They had a great time. It was freezing here. The wind was freezing cold. And yeah, I know it's not, it's not a cold country, but it was one of those days where even with several layers on, I was shivering cold, but I pulled my phone out and I saw some news on Tesla's version for supercharger, which is going to be coming out this year. And I've got to say, I was kind of excited for one Tesla supercharger network eventually is going to be open to every other electric car. So that means you and I regardless of what brand of car we use, we'll be able to use these superchargers. So this is actually really relevant information to anyone who plans on owning an electric car. Rumors about Tesla's version 4 superchargers have been coming thick and fast from all, all over the place. However, most of it is speculation at this stage. Tesla superchargers are the most populous on earth, and they've also started to expand to other automakers in some regions like Europe. As in, that means that other people with other cars that are not Tesla can start using these superchargers in some areas in Europe. However, Tesla is bringing out a new design and a potential adoption of CCS support for non-Tesla owners. When I say potential, it is coming to everyone. It's just a matter of time. And of course, Tesla will have a plug that we have to use for non-Tesla powered vehicles that you have to use to basically convert, adapt your car to be able to plug in if it's not a Tesla, obviously. However, the truth is Tesla's version three superchargers while being really, really good are perceived by some people in the industry as being too slow. They're 250 kilowatt version three chargers. However, of course, Porsche, Hyundai, Kia have cars that can charge it up to 350 kilowatt. Now, can you really charge them up to 350 kilowatt? Yeah, you theoretically can. But I'd say probably 95% of superchargers or fast chargers are not going to charge them to that speed. Of course, they don't stay at that rate anyway for longer than a couple of minutes. And the reality is that, yeah, it, it's sort of misleading, to be honest, to say it's a 350 kilowatt supercharger if, well, it's very hard to find any that will do that, that, that actual speed. And secondly, the reality is charge rates at 350 kilowatt don't last for very long, last for a very, very short period of time. So it's misleading. But that said, that's how all chargers are branded pretty much. So, I mean, most chargers might say 250 kilowatt to 150 or 250 or a car might be rated at that. But the likelihood of you actually getting those speeds for any longer than a few minutes is not very high. Now, Tesla's earlier supercharger, like I said, the V3, the version three, is capable of 250 kilowatt charging speeds that can give owners 1000 miles of range per hour. In theory, of course, there isn't any Tesla vehicles that can currently give you 1000 miles of range. So we have this image from Marco RP Tesla showing you the difference in design between the version three and the version four. And as you can see, the version four is slimmer, but it's longer. The interesting thing is this version four supercharger actually looks very similar to Tesla's mega chargers that Tesla have installed to be able to charge their semi truck, right? Their electric semi trailers. Tesla Rati, the website showed exclusive images of the mega charger design at the Frito-Lay factory in Modesto in June, and it's similar to the drafts of the version 4 supercharger design. I think that the Cybertruck will be capable of faster charging and will be able to utilize the faster charging speeds that we're going to see from the new version 4 supercharger. That'll be a big advantage for people who buy the Cybertruck being able to charge their battery quite quickly, because it actually makes a bigger difference. The bigger the battery pack is, the bigger the difference it makes if your battery pack can charge faster. Now, interestingly, there's a lot of speculation out there right now saying that Tesla is planning to develop a supercharger charge post that has dual cables 
that are suitable for both version 3 and version 4 and could also include a potential CCS charging port for third-party automakers to use. So basically what's going to happen is these new charging towers or piles, as they're called in China, will have a version 3 on one side and a version 4 on the other side. Obviously, the version 3 will be, you know, work with all Teslas that have been made in the past, well, most of them, and the version 4 will work for the newer models that will be equipped with version 4 charging technology. So when are they coming? Good question. Version 4 superchargers, according to Holmar's catalog, deployment will start this year. First locations will be Austin, Texas. Higher max charge rate and voltage will be supported, as well as both CCS and Tesla cables. This leads me to believe that the Cybertruck will be capable of a higher max voltage and be able to charge at speeds greater than what are provided from the version 3 network. So that would mean that, in theory then, the Cybertruck would be able to charge at speeds faster than 250 kilowatts. So what charge would they be able to charge at? Well, the truth is nobody knows right now. My speculation is 400 kilowatt. That's what I'm going to go with. Others have said 500. I think that's a bit too optimistic. But the truth is there could be 500 because Xpeng and Neo are both deploying 480 and 500 kilowatt charging stations around China respectively right now this year. And they say their vehicles are capable of charging their cars at those kinds of speeds, probably for only a couple of minutes. But the reality is when the charging tapers off and goes down, you still be looking at pretty fast charging speeds. You might be looking at an average of you know, 200 plus kilowatt charging speed for the entire charge cycle. And if you can get that, that would be next level. Very, very fast charging. Now I've talked about the charging speeds of those Neo and Xpeng cars in other videos, and I'll put some links in the description below. Personally, I'm absolutely fascinated to see what charging speeds these version four chargers will have. Like I said, my guess is 400. Could be faster though. And really, remember, one of the key things is not the total possible charging speed, like the highest possible charging speed. It's actually what the average charging speed is from starting charging to ending charging. That's far more important. Really, the flashy headline number is saying, oh, my car can charge to 500 kilowatts. It's amazing. But if you can only charge to 500 for one minute, and then the rest of the time it's at 100, or an average of you know 100 to 150, it's not as good as you think. So really what's more important is the average charging speed over the life of that charge. So I'll bring you some information over the next few months, showing you examples between one car versus another, and how quickly they can charge in the real world. What, what do you think? Are you excited for this version 4? What do you think the charging speed will be with version 4? And do you think the Cybertruck will be capable of using these new version 4 chargers? And I think it will be. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Bye-bye.